This is the Render 2 method for uh, products with plastic components. This is looking at an existing pen drive. And you can see from the top half of this page, we've already had a little go and attempt at uh, rendering this. These drawings are created by uh, using a late pad and tracing off the original drawing from the, the earlier page you may have seen on the uh, Get a Grip um, website. These are twice the size of the actual pen itself. The idea we're going to try and do this bigger than full size. It gives us space to work. The smaller drawings you'll see later on are a little bit too fiddly, uh, so that on occasions we have to draw uh, and work and render bigger size. What we've got at the moment is just a flat strike through technique with a very light pen. We have swatches down the left hand side showing the different the markers that are available. And we're just ticking off just to see with those swatches which is the most appropriate. Now, rule of thumb, start light, you can always get darker. Um, you see we've got some indigo uh, greys, we've got some blue greys, we've got uh, a range, really not just a, a full set of markers, we're trying to use what's available. The pen, the pen drive itself has a little recess now, because it's black on the, 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 the video here, you can't really see the recess. If you have a look later on, we'll see it moving about and we'll be able to pick up the, the various uh, features on the side of this. The bottom edge has a, a radius slope, which is a contradiction in term, but it does round uh, off at a, a bit like a chamfer with a slight curve to it. So that's why this bottom area is getting darkened in. And as I said before, if we start with the lighter coloured pens, we can get darker. I think already we're deciding that the lightest uh, uh, grey four was just a little bit too light. So using the next pen up, we're just going to wipe strike through. The idea of this technique, by the way, is that we can build up the component parts then cut and assemble the drawing together. So strike through means we don't have any acceleration or deceleration of the pen and no uh, no dark bands appearing within it. So we're just going over the work we did before with the lighter pen and uh, with a slightly darker marker. We may have to go darker again. This pe paper is not bleed proof in that the ink will, um, will travel a little bit rather than stopping exactly where you want a bleed proof paper paper is uh, by far and away the best to use but it's a bit more expensive so as I said this is just using a, a late pad to, to trace through the originals if you can print or photocopy uh, originals onto better paper all the better for you but this is done with minimum resources so we've got a little recess uh, chamfer internal chamfer thing going this little tick shape in the middle now we're going around the edge just to give the the idea of a slight radius at the edge of every surface. We did this with pencils way back in first year, where you can just take the same colour and add the colour inside the outline. Now you can see the little internal chamfer, this little recessed part on the surface. Again, you'll see it once we move the pen, the pen drive about. We're just going over the same pen. Remember, the pens itself gives it one uh, tone, but we can go over the several times and increase the density of that tone or colour. Um, and at the moment, the chamfer on the right hand side is a little bit dark. We'll maybe have to do some more work uh, on that surface. But we now have a, a dark edge at the bottom. We have the internal chamfer. We have a darker line just inside the surface. Um, there's actually a sheet of paper underneath this because the paper, as I've mentioned before, does bleed through. And that means that the ink goes through to the pages underneath. Now we're using a white pencil just inside the, the outline and the dark line that we put on. Uh, to have a little highlight that lights always assumed to come from the upper right hand corner so the highlights would be towards the upper and left and the shadow or darker edges would tend to be to the lower and right hand side the top edge there has a slight the um, chamfer going the opposite direction to the lower one if you like so we're just using the white pencil just to lighten off that area that we've already rendered so the one pen effectively because the other ones have disappeared underneath have given us this uh, with three or four different uh, densities of, of, of grey tone. The flat surface, which we're going to assume is re relatively flat in this midpoint here, I'm just going to lighten off and uh, again, looking at the real product, you can see the, the GoPro's light reflecting on the, the metal part. There is a, a slight highlight on that inside edge. Again, having a real product makes this so much easier. An imaginary product is much, much more challenging to do. So what we've got this now is the the first part really rendered up on the left the main body. We're going for strike through. We've got a couple of different tracings of the, the button. You don't see a lot of the button. But one is to strike through. The other one is just to work within the, uh, the surface itself. 
and it does round off on this front top corner so it'll be a little bit darker as it rounds off on that edge now we can go with the, the original marker or we may have to go with a grey just to darken it off to make it look as if it's uh, rotating round other areas we can look at within here we may have to uh, a little bit of highlight so white pencil might be useful um, and again this part is going to be cut out we're going to use one of these two there's a the grey going on at the moment just uh, try to darken that uh, right hand side as it rotates from the well, horizontal front surface to the right hand vertical surface and through that to a curve now the the metal part we'll look at in a minute but we're just using the white pencil again good quality white pencil makes a big difference and just picking up the highlighting those edges those parts that are towards the left hand side and upper side do the same on both and i'll make a decision as to which one i'm going to use now the metal part, I wasn't too sure on uh, which colour is going to go best in here. In general, metals work better with greys and light blues. It's a cold uh, surface, so we tend to use the, the bluey greys and uh, a light blue pen. Just try with the greys at the moment. Again, if you look at the product, you can just make out in the, the video here, the actual metal part itself. There's little recesses, which we can see some detail in. If you have a look at that printed page, and the analysis of this product, there's, a, there's actually little bits of copper connector visible through there. A little bit of a highlight on the top edge and a little bit darker at the bottom edge. Again, light coming from the upper and left hand side. Um, looking through the holes in this pen drive device, this one's actually got ooze in it, so it looks white. So I had a look at another one just to check. There's actually copper uh, strips visible. These are contacts to pick up the, the data from one uh, from the pen drive to the computer or whatever else it's connecting to. And then there's a sort of green, I think it's a, the circuit board internal. So initially we put on the copper type colour and then we're going to use a sort of green for the circuit board to uh, really just highlight the areas that will be the stripes. There's actually three stripes, one broad and two narrow, uh, visible internally. So just using the pen, it's a little bit on the chunky side of these pens, so we're going to have to possibly use a finer pen or just go for an approximation. Now these holes and the surface we're rendering at the moment are lower down, they're, they're recessed and maybe three or four millimetres below the metal surface. So again we may have to go in and use um, a, a drop of shadow of some sort to give this impression of depth. So in the grey, working okay but I'm not entirely satisfied with that. We've traced off uh, three copies of this um, onto this second sheet of the layout pad. Um, we maybe have a go with the, the, the blue pen, but at the moment let's just try, yeah, add a little bit more darkness. Remember, top and left would be light, bottom and right would be dark. That's the sort of general rule. Now we're getting into the little drop shadow inside that the surface there but there's quite a distinct highlight in there as well and that's going to be a little bit more tricky to do we may have to use something like a highlighter pen uh, a tip x pen because of the lightness of the material use a blue marker there just to, to try and get a little ah, it's not worked particularly well that pen's not to uh, streak the cross it left a little bit messy so we'll just try again let me try this middle one um Let's see if we start with the blue and then build that's a little bit over the top on the, the blue side. As I say, it is a case of suck it and see, have a go and try the colours. There's no uh, one correct way of doing this. Um, but I definitely think that uh, blue ones may be a little bit too intense on the blue. And maybe we'll look at a different marker. Depending on what you've got available, this is a, a lighter blue marker. And if we keep the strokes kind of light on the way across, we can build up areas of reflection like a top edge there where we've got a high sharp edge of blue and then the, the white next to it and the bottom right hand side you can see very much how that um, strike through technique is working you can see the pens actually straddling the line involved but a bit more time would be worth spending on this bottom one then it, it looks lighter it looks shinier and um, use a darker blue pen just to give a, a deeper bottom and right hand side the, the top edge is going to get a little bit of a a dark edge so the white stands out white works best against dark and um, that's how you get the contrast 
these parts will have shadows on them cast by the other objects. We're going to leave that just now and just concentrate on that uh, the, the the detail here. Now remember, this is twice full size. What we've done is we've gone. Oh, this is the copper going in again as before, and then the green. This but this is drawn twice full size. To draw this small or full size is a really really challenging uh, task for anybody. My eyesight's not that good these days, so. Uh, certainly for sure drawing things bigger makes life a lot easier uh, and technically if you want to make a very accurate drawing draw big and then shrink it all your mistakes all those little inaccuracies reduced down to such a degree as to hardly noticeable if you want proof of this technique do the opposite draw small and enlarge and you'll see a magnification of all the mistakes you've made so we'll just get in with this um, shadow idea using the tip of the um, the, the narrow tip, of the, remember these are double-ended markers, so we've got a narrow tip and a broad edge. And we're putting that little drop shadow, that would be towards the, because it's a recess, it'd be to the top and left-hand side. And we can also um, give a little bit more of an edge at the bottom down there. So, we've now got the three bits rendered. This paper wasn't the best, this delayed paper is a little bit thin, so... And normally I'd cut this out with a scalpel uh, and a cutting mat, but um, it's a little bit friable, a little bit tender, so we're just using a set of scissors and cutting. And initially the, the, the basic rectangle, and we're going to lose all our swatches and the strike through, so you can see all that work is now gone. And a little bit of trimming to do around the edge. One of the important things about putting a dark edge around the outside, and I know in reality... Other than a bath, there's very few things that have a black line round about it, round it, and even then, if you don't wash the bath, you'll have that black line for a while. We're just going round this edge. The reason the black line is there, it gives us a chance when we're cutting to have a little bit of give and take. Um, but what we'll maybe do is actually reinforce that line again once it's um, cut and pasted on. So I said this idea straight through, we could um, take the three parts, render them, strike through technique, adding highlight, adding shadow, Adding a reflection to a degree that highlight on the um, on the metal parts of movies that we're going to get on this one. A little bit tricky going around these little ins and outs. We we could uh, just cut straight across and um, take white paper on white paper background and maybe ignore the the lack of cutting detail. Um, and fingers out the way. Just this last trim. The broad edge of the black outline makes it easier to cut. Simple as that. Um, last bit to go will be the metal component with the recesses, etc. I'm just going to drop that on this now. We'll have to get the position right. That's one thing that's pretty important. There's no point in having it in the wrong place. And there's the, the lower of the three getting trimmed out. You can see all the strike through disappearing um, using the broader outline around the outside of it. And then we're going to try and just sit these in position. That looks about right. One thing you may or may not have been taught and this is a really important skill, is actually using Pritt stick correctly. I say correctly because you can do all this work and ruin your work in a matter of seconds. And that's working from the centre of the object, turned on its face, on a piece of scrap paper, and working from the centre out. That way your paper's always under tension, and we don't get any sticky stuff on the table. So we're using an off-cut of paper as our paste-up board. And this is a little bit low on the page, but apologies for that. Then wiping from the centre out, from one edge across, we get a flat. It's best to put these things on horizontal. Things at angles on pages sometimes have a tendency not to work. This is a little bit awkward, so I'm just going to sit the, the button that's disappeared off the screen, uh, the button on top of the print stick, just to get that covered. And carefully again, position and press into place. Now, if you have a look, it's got a few rough edges. We'll do some work on that in a minute or two. Um, positioning the, the button in place, it definitely stands out. Um, to do that uh, by a different method, that's actually pretty tricky. There's that wiping from the centre out technique again. Again, on the piece of scrap paper, making sure this one lines up. And it does line up with the bottom curve as it comes in, so a reasonably easy fix. It won't be the first time somebody stuck something on the wrong way around. So just make sure it's lined up before we give it the final press down. As I said, that's the parts, but we've still got a little bit of work to do in this. And again, because this is a real thing, having the real product handy makes a real, real, sorry, real difference. 
we can actually have a look and see how close we are to the actual physical item. Um, outline again, we can be careful in this and just cut on the actual paper side rather than the thing we've cut out, by which I mean the, the marker pen is going around the edge of the paper that was the background, not um, the actual cutout itself. So on the edge of the cutout, but actually leaving a line on the, the background paper. And that's going to get rid of any indiscrepancies, uh, indiscre discrepancies on that outline. Remember, round, this will be maybe some shadow lines as well, but at the moon time, it's really just the outline. This is just a graphic technique to add emphasis to the object that you're drawing. Down the front edge as well. But we'll go around that button, a little bit fiddly, maybe a better pen. There's an internal line going in, there's a shadow line from that edge. Um, maybe do a couple on those metal recesses as well if we get a chance. It is happening, it's just off screen, so I got carried away doing this, forgetting there's a camera above it. And then round the outside of that button, a little bit more tricky, you might take a couple of just paths going round to get that sorted out. So we can still add a little bit of sh shade, we can add a little bit of shadow and uh, some highlights. Let's see what we've got at the moment. Not looking too bad. Very simple technique would be to put a background behind that. I hate the term flash bar. The term background does exactly what it says on the tin. And if you make the object, sorry, if you allow the, the background to stop rather than going right the way around the object, because it appears to be sticking out the top or sides, it increases this impression of uh, one object sitting on top of another. Now the bump at one material here as we hit the, the cutout, that's an easy way of just stopping that render. The reason I didn't render that first, and you could easily have rendered a, a rectangle first and put this down, is that the, the lake paper is so thin, pink would actually shine through. So I had to make a decision there, using the mask again at the end, uh, not to put a background down first. If you have done it in heavier duty paper, then by all means paper or um, card as a as a, a, a possible uh, background and then cut and paste on top. That works perfectly well. There we go. Now, again, let's have a look at the, the real thing and see where we're going to put some highlights. Definitely to reinforce that curve at the top corner there. That's where the slight radius on that object, so the, the highlight is close to the edge. The bigger the radius, the further in the surface that highlight would become. So a larger radius corner um, would have a highlight some three or four millimetres in from the edge. This area here in the real object appears lighter, so we're just going over that and maybe extend it a little bit further along. Uh, that's that same reasonable quality white pencil. Unfortunately, the, the, the white pencil is not working on these two edges. There is another little trick we can use, but it might take us a minute or two to, to get the, the equipment for that. Um, the second, well, we can use talcum powder to lighten things up, believe it or not. You can use a white pencil and you can also use um, Tipex. So what's going on in the snow just at the edge here is the shadow that would be cast, thank you, that would be cast from the thicker grey body, sorry, black body, grey body, onto this metal part. So we're looking at this little cast shadow coming across from one onto the other. There's also a couple of little depressions there that I forgot to highlight earlier on. And that actually holds, and there's a third one just in there. Now that was spotted in the paperwork uh, when we looked at detail in the product. Th those things are there for a reason. Uh, they're not random. There's a definite need for them. Um, somebody spent a, an awful lot of time, very professional engineers, designers, production engineers, uh, involved in the design and making of these products. So take it that they know what they're talking about. It's uh, a good product that's been on the sale for a long time and will continue to sell well. So there's a little shadow showing that the little depression in there, little, um, going down the way, it's slightly darker at one side or the other because it's a V-shaped depression. We're just going over some of those edges and again, building up, starting off with a lighter grey. That's not working, we can add a little bit more. Basically, we'll start light, go dark. It's uh, a bad idea to do the other way around. It's very, very, very difficult to get rid of colour or tone once it's down. So not looking too bad. Um, reasonably happy with that. Maybe this flat surface across the middle could be a little bit lighter or the top edge and see 
Yeah, it's, as it moves there, we can get a little hint of the, the highlight, but I'm afraid the camera's not really picked it up. So I'm going to lighten off the surface here to give it a, a less sudden, a less austere, a less grey end to it. Really, I should have been a bit better with the marker pen in that area. So that whole flat spot in the middle, that horizontal flat surface, is going to try and get rounded off or rendered off. Um, so again, looking at the real thing, looking at your drawing. Look at the real thing. Remember, that's twice full size. This is a Tipex pen. Now, unfortunately, this one was a little bit dry, so it took a little bit of waking up. Basically, it's got a squeezable tube and a little uh, pen nib that floats in and out. And you should be able to get lines or dots of white. Unfortunately, this one was a little bit on the dry side uh, and didn't really give us a good an effect as we'd hoped for. First of all, on the metal part where there is a fairly high reflection uh, on the object, which would have been good. Remember, reflections work best if they're against dark, so uh, light against dark. And maybe on the left-hand top shoulder there on that curve, there's a little bit of a highlight up there as well. Um, and I think maybe a couple of retouches on the, the red button, those little bumpy parts and the slope, just a little touch of white on there. It's You don't notice it until you realise it's uh, it's actually done a reasonably good job at drawing your eye towards that part. Okay, so that looks... Well, it's taken a wee while, but that looks in real time uh, fairly realistic, and it's a bigger size. Okay, so what was the alternative? The alternative was method one. Method two seems to work. Method one was to take the object that you've drawn, draw around it, highlight the edges off the side of it, and you've got those edges highlighted, internal components highlighted or features highlighted, to build them up on the inside and then finally to uh, firm in the, uh, the visible surfaces. On the left hand side we've got three stages and this one we're doing at the moment, it's been condensed down to two and the one on the right hand side, it's been done one on top of the other. So basically building this object up. That's the object. We're going to have to make a couple of decisions on this. This is using a pretty close uh, approximation pen wise. Luckily, uh, this pen drive produced by ScanDisk has lots of internal components. It's obviously aimed at a particular market, way beyond my pay scale. I have no idea how it's made. Um, it's not something I'm doing in graphics, but I am looking at real products. The surface on top, look at that grey scale again. The surface at the top, chamfer, it's got a slope on it. Uh, it's got a, a, a whiter white, if you know what I mean. So we may have to darken the top edge, but for sure the bottom edge, the uh, this one here, we can use a grey marker just to give this chamfered sloping edge. There we go, a little bit of uh, darkness. Now there will be other areas that are also got this uh, grey tone on it. The, the inside this recess, you can actually see inside that part. It's not a flat cut, it's at an angle. And inside, or rather the lower sides, of that uh, little scoop that sticks out the side. Again, starting light, we can build up. We start in light, we can build up little bumps on the side there, a little bit of feature on those. We can add a little bit of grey too. We might do a wee bit on the um, the pink or orange piece on the right hand side. There are no holes in that because this one has been designed with the holes on the other side. So um, to show this top, this looks a bit severe, to show this top edge of the chamfer is light, what I'm choosing to do here is to use the lightest pen I've got access to and just make the white a little bit grey on that top edge. So maybe leave a little bit of a highlight on that top edge there. Darkening in the bottom edges using the chisel tip and that's the uh, broad end of the marker and then just looking for other areas that may have a little bit of a shadow cast on them. Darker areas, a little recess for a button in there which is just visible. In the, not really in the angle I placed it in the real thing but if you have a look at the real product you'll, you'll see that again real product stuff coming to the fore. There's a shadow on that top edge, and a little recess in there, and they're a little bit darker. So we're just going over with a slightly darker pen. Again, starting light and going darker. So looking at the, 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 the white and, we'll call it salmon, pink, uh, pen drive at the moment, we've got a reasonable approximation, but it's not as sharp as the bigger strike-through type drawing. So for a quick sketch, not a bad idea, and these are all pretty quick sketches. You see the time it's taking to do that compared to the previous one. If it was a design developing an idea type, 
sketchy, absolutely. If it was analysing things quickly, I would definitely do it this way. And the analytical preliminary sketches, these are uh, fantastic at. If it was a presentation drawing, I would definitely be going for the strike through technique. That's uh, method two, the one, I, the one I showed you first. So we've now got uh, the pink one done. The, the one on the left hand side is actually a green. Now again, we have to look to see what uh, colours we have. The light in this room wasn't particularly good, so the, you see the green's changed a few times just as it moves slightly on the page there. And we're going to sample, get some swatches of the green pens that we have available. Just marking them down the side so you've got a reference point. Oh, it's a bit severe. Um, reference point at the, the corner of the page. Swatches, proper name for them are colour samples. And a pen, a given pen of a colour uh, written on the end of it, can give a different colour on different types of paper. So it's best to try it out on each uh, surface you're working on. In fact, if you're drawing the same thing on different medium, the same pen will give slightly different results. So not quite straight through, having to stop and start. And you can see it's a little bit messier than that. The camera's shaking, sorry. Um, just going around the inside of that object, just to... If you have a look at the pen drive itself, it has a white border around about it. There's a top cap with a sliding mechanism and a recess on it. There's a recess, just add a little bit of shade to that, a little bit of darkening in with the same pen. So you can get the idea of out surfaces and in surfaces. The, this curved part is an, is an outy. Um, terms that students have used in the past and it seems to it seems to work as you've got for this type of drawings, innies and outies and um, the shadow and the highlight will be on different sides if an object is an innie or an outie. In this case it's an innie so the shadow's on the top and left but the little uh, button on the left hand side there, which going for a slightly different pen this time again it's probably the green or the grey marker that's an IT, so it's gone to the opposite side. That triangle has got a hole in it and a shadow at the bottom. This is a chamfered edge on this uh, internal part. And we're just trying to reinforce as much as we can, building up the colour. Uh, if you know, know the pen's better, you can be a bit braver, but there's a shadow from that part because it's above the other rest of the surface. So looking at where shadow... In fact, you can see it on the real thing up above. I may not have the best colour match for it, but we've got something that's starting to, to show depth, the shadows uh, of one raised surface being cast onto a lower one. So, what we've got now, we're going to try a little bit of a, a background in this. And the reason I put a background is there's a white trim around the, the pen drive itself. The top bit, the cap, if you like, is green with the, the uh, open and close mechanism on it, but the body's actually underneath is white. It won't stand out against the white background. So if I can just go around the edge here and try and leave the white edge. There we go. It's maybe not as visible as it like to have been, but and this time I've not stopped it like I did below. It's actually as if it's uh, completely contained. There's the same grey marker now just trying to be used to to reinforce those darker areas for the innies and outies on the surface. Other things we could do is we could put some drop shadows to show the, the, the as if the object's lying on a surface. We certainly can do some work with the um, white pencil. That's a kind of light green, so it's maybe not the easiest to surfaces to put a highlight on, and possibly if I had that uh, pen working again, it would give it a better result. So looking here, just to try and get some real bit of that metallic blue on the end there for that metallic uh, junction, a little bit of shadow of the the body coming down. Originally in blue, but maybe we can add a bit of grey on that later on as well. Um, you can see as it moves in front of the camera, there's a little bit of distortion in this GoPro as well as shakes. Um, so apologies for that. I'm trying to put the, sh the highlight on the opposite side now to the shadow. So the highlights at top and left top and left and that recess has got a shadow on the bottom and right um, and maybe a little bit inside there although against that white edge it's maybe not quite so visible maybe a wee bit on the triangle on the button as well so these things are best practiced in a practice piece um, this is not this video is not to show you how to use a marker how to work on highlights and shadows 
these are skills we would expect you to have to do something like this. Okay, um, green one, green pen. Um, pink one, pink pen. Black one, bit of a problem. So look at the samples of swatches down the side there. We'll probably go for the uh, IG9, IG10. There or thereabouts. We're going to go for the darker pen. And because we're not using strike through, I'm having to work the narrow tip as neat as I can. Uh, what we don't do is try and scrub the pens as we're going along. This is an internal chamfer on the pen drive itself and I'm just going to work up to that edge and this is not the darkest grey but it is still pretty dark it's not black uh, and if I move the pen drive uh, a little bit later on you might see the features we've already drawn onto the surface these features are a raised uh, platform at the top uh, which will have highlights on one side and shadows on the other and a slightly sloping uh, radius edge. So building up the, the black as grey. Very seldom would I try and get straight into black. And even if I did, there's ways of lightening up black using that talcum powder I mentioned earlier on. So striking along but not striking through. Trying to control it. And there we go. We've got this grey thing. So how can we make that top a little bit of a highlight visible in the real thing? Um, how can we make that stand out? Well, we can put the shadow or the bottom edge where it uh, is going to be most obvious. That's bottom and right. And then that little raised surface, and you just pick it out now, the bottom and right side of that. So if that's the, the shadow side, there's a little recess, that little chamfered hole inside it. If that's the uh, shadow side, then the opposite for an IT would be left and upper. Uh, should be a little bit sharper pen if they turn it around and just try to pick up both the object on the outside and the re the uh, sticking up platform or surface on the top. One thing that's tricky to add to this would be text. And it's mentioned in the paper version um, and that's a, a different ballgame completely. What we're doing now is we're, we're adding a shadow onto the white surface using one of the lightest greys that we have. That's for that recess and a little hole inside that button. Buttons a little bit like a, a, a novel uh, after eight, not after eight, a, 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 a polyment hole in the centre. So we're going to look at now putting the metal surface. There's, there's light blue streaks again across there, darker at the bottom edge. There'll be some shadows cast in that. Um, there might even be a wee bit of this sort of uh, copper or green uh, circuit board visible underneath. And we're just going to yeah, darken in underneath there, darken the bottom edge, and a little bit of a shadow cast by the body onto the metal part. Unmentioned at this point, there's a little ring sticks at the top left hand corner. And uh, make this one stand out. There's a little recesses again, there's little dimples darkening in that edge, darkening the right hand side. Going for a little bit more contrast. And uh, I think to make this one stand out, I'll need some sort of background. The first one was all encompassing. The second one had no background. Or sorry, left hand side had grey. Middle one has nothing. This one here, I think I'm going to go for a colour. Get a strong colour. And I want the white and the metal parts to stand out. So it's just a little edge down here. A little rectangular surface. So it looks like it's sitting on a stripe or over a striped surface. You can also add a little bit of a shadow, drop shadow, underneath the object. Because if the light is coming from the top left hand corner, then depending on the light, how low the light source is, there'll be a shadow cast from this three dimensional object onto the green stuff. I haven't got going into white. Um, that might be something we could actually add. In fact, you can see a long drop shadow on the actual real object as I moved it there. Taking that same idea back to the previous ones then. What could we do? We could take a, again, the, the shadow itself, or the drop shadow, tells us a lot about the thickness of the object. Um, taller objects will have longer shadows. Thinner objects will have, you see this is a little bit chunky, and it's actually a, quite a, a, 
a, a chunky little pen drive, this radius one. So that does scoop away quite a lot underneath. And that's maybe showing the white a little bit better now. And it's offset front and, sorry, right and under. So the shadow. Just to try and give it a little bit of lift. Now, this is going to be a bit severe because it looks quite good on the white background. But if I can put in a lower left, sorry, lower and right hand side shadow that's mimicking the object itself. It's maybe not quite so it's an offset, a little bit sticking at the end there. This is again using a, a darker pen uh, and assuming it's lying on a white surface. Maybe it's on a grey surface or on a partially green surface. It's kind of severe. Maybe a lighter pen would have worked better. But we have uh, the green was used first of all. So now going over that grey that I've done with the other ones. You can see that just beefs up the idea of a little drop shadow down there. Now, it's taken probably as long to do three. It's actually taken less time to do three using this method as it did to do one using the other method. There's the construction build-up. There's the actual product, the real products involved, and the rendered drawings. Hope this has helped you have a little look at uh, different ways of rendering products with plastic finishes. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, I would always suggest that you want to render, but render real things. At least you can look at what you're doing and get an idea how light and shade and shadow will sit. Enjoy your drawing.